But before I let you go, I've got uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about, um, and it's on the platform side. You know, we co collect a lot of data to repeat 25 trillion events in a single quarter. That's an amazing amount of data we collect for our customers. And what you're seeing is we're collecting more types of data, the customer experience data, the application data, and the infrastructure data. And we believe in order to really help all of you be successful, we want to expose that data to every person who plays a role in the success of the digital project. How do we get the right data to more and more people? Not just the six roles, but the 60 or 600 that all play a part in making digital successful. The challenge is this. It's too much data for any one human to fully get all the value out of it. You know, when, when, when we're collecting every click and every infrastructure event, hidden inside that data is incredibly powerful, important stuff. And when we talked to our customers, we looked at our customers, we often saw that there might be a handful of real experts who they've got highly, you know, a lot of analytical skills, a good understanding of our products, and a good understanding of how to make sense of the data we collect. And what they will do is they'll go spending their time in our products and finding interesting stuff and then sharing that interesting stuff to the other people around. They might find an interesting thing like a security threat. I see a spike in abnormal activity. Or they might see a, 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 um, a change in the behavior of a certain transaction. And then they may go so far as to diagnose the root cause or help diagnose the root cause and hand off to other people. So what we've been thinking hard about for the be since for about nine months is what if we can take all of that expertise and put it into software? What if we could take the more than 1,000 engineering years of expertise in understanding all of this data about application health and customer activity, put it into algorithms, to use an overused term, put it into artificial intelligence, and make it so that we surface the right data to the right people in real time so that they have a complete understanding of what's going on in their digital business. And it's not just a couple people, it's a dozens or hundreds of people all playing a part in making digital successful. So that it's not just more and more dashboards you need to understand, it's rather a feed of what's relevant and interesting to you that our AI, I, our AI algorithms surface to you. So I, I chartered our research team to, to, to start this research project last spring and I gave them the challenge. I said, I want a killer demo by Future Stack, and they delivered. So, so you know, this was kind of what it felt like when they showed me the demo <laughs> <laughs> last week. So, so, um, so I want to now show you a brand new project that we're going to have ready for you very soon. It's called Project Seymour. So with that, I am going to go to the demo. Who wants to see New Relic's future? So New Relic Seymour, think of it as an alternative way to come into New Relic. You could choose to come into New Relic to one of our dashboards. That's your favorite dashboard to have a bird's eye view. And that's still available to you. But for many people, they just kind of want to come in and see a feed. Seymour, tell me what's interesting that I should know about. And I'll provide you as a user signal as to what is actually interesting to me that'll feed a machine learning algorithm that will improve the quality of the cards that, that are actually relevant to me in doing my work and you in doing your work. So that could take into account you know, what applications are throwing off that data or what particular events are actually of interest to me based on my role. So we have a an ever-growing collection of algorithms. Those algorithms generate what we call cards. A card is basically a summary of something interesting that we see in this massive influx of data coming from the customer experience, coming from the application, and coming from the infrastructure, all into one nice, easy-to-consume feed. So let's look at a couple cards that, again, an expert, if they spend enough time, could surface within the bowels of our data, but now is automatically surfaced in software. Here's the first one. How many people have heard of an N plus one query anti-pattern. All right, some of you, this is the whole point. For those of you who know what it is, basically it is, let's say when someone does a transaction like logging in. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom this up a bit. Um, if you want to get a bunch of rows from the database, you probably want to do that in one query, get like the 10 records from the database or the 100 records from the database. But sometimes people write code that gets them one at a time. And so, 
what should take a short amount of time is like going back and fetching. It's kind of like going to the grocery store, getting the milk, coming back home, going to the grocery store, and then getting the, you know, the rice and, and then doing that one at a time. Very inefficient for your software. And that's buried in the data we collect. Why don't we surface that for you? Say, hey, this is a problem. And then Seymour tells you that it's happening. There's always a way to go into our products like APM to see the raw data and, and, and verify it. But here's what it is. Here's an explanation of what it is. And, and, um, and I can go straight into to drill into fixing this. Let me show you a couple other, uh, other cards that pop up. What if we can detect anomalies? Now, here's where anomalies are a little different from baselines. Baselines are things where I've tuned them and I want to be notified, right? Those are things that you want to wake me up for. But there's a lot more anomalous behavior that happens that may be just worth putting in your feed to explore when you get to work the next day. Hmm, this looks a little fishy. Could be because someone's hacking your system. Could be because there's just a weird performance behavior. You know, but we've done a lot of AI, we put a lot of machine learning algorithms into this particular anomaly detection approach, and here's get it where it gets really cool. A new relic expert would then say, here's the anomaly, and then I'm going to drill in using the new relic user interface to diagnose the problem. I'm going to look at the database activity. I'm, if it's calling an external service, I'm going to follow the, the breadcrumbs across the services until I find why is this thing misbehaving. That's really the hallmark of what New Relic does for our customers, is provide a UI for that. What if we could embed all of that logic into an automated root cause analysis? Just show me the answer. Show me the root cause. And that's what this does. So, so if you read this, and it's a little bit hard to read, um, but I can say, in this particular case, what started off as an anomaly in this app called this service, which called this service, which called this service, and it came all the way down to the disk database statement. I have automatically diagnosed the problem to you to the right service, the right statement, the right piece of code, and again, I can just go straight into that and, and, and look at that diagnosis if I want to. So, Let's come back to, to this. Um, there are other things we can look at. I'll just go through them quickly. Imagine that these algorithms just get more complete and smarter over time. And, of course, if you have more of our products deployed, you're going to see more interesting algorithms. We actually now are using, or we're putting in cards for infrastructure information. AI that basically can predict when, you're gonna, when you've got you know, a really unusual looking um, network spike. Or when you're looking, predicting when you're going to run out of disk across those thousands of hosts in your environment, or if you have a security attack. We automatically, with Seymour, can detect when someone's trying to do XSS or traversal attacks. We can explain what those things are. We've got documentation, again, trying to help you make the most of all these products we've done for you. Now, when this sort of thing happens, often you want to bring other people into the team. What if I have a suspicion on who, who wrote this particular transaction? Let's say it's Jason. I'm going to say, hey, Jason, what's up with this? Seymour now has embedded collaboration features. And I can see Jason immediately saw this. And what's cool is Jason has the power of Seymour in his pocket. So we're also delivering a Seymour iOS app. So can we show that iOS app on the screen? Do we have that capability? So there it is. It's on Jason's screen. Jason got hit up by his CEO. And he can, so he's on, he's, let's say he's on the subway, but he's on it, right? He's going to fix that query. Um, Jason may not have been um, planning on seeing New Relic that day. But what we've done is we've done all that analysis. We've taken what humans used to do of finding a problem, diagnosing it, taking it so far, and then saying, I need to bring someone into the, into the collaboration of solving the problem. So that's all built in, and it's got a wonderful Slack integration as well. Um, we've got more and more um, algorithms we're going to build over time. And, and of course, I can thumbs up and down and say, wow, that's a really good card. I, wanna, I want to see more of those. I can star them. You get the idea. This is, this is an incredibly complete solution. It's the future of monitoring. The future of monitoring, of course, there will be more and more dashboards and more and more metrics, more and more visibility. But you can't be expected to know every one of them. 
it's more data than a human can possibly process. Now, you can't just do raw, you know, raw statistical analysis on the data and expect to get good insights. That's where we leverage the more than 1,000 person years of expertise in understanding how to interpret that data and then putting it into software. Just like tes Tesla has done a lot of thinking on what do people do when they drive cars, right? It's that expertise and understanding that domain of problem that makes this such a powerful, powerful solution. And, and we can go back to the main screen. Um, the, 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 the last thing I'd share with you is um, this is si simply not possible. Um, actually, we can, we can go back to the slides. Thank you. This is simply not possible with on-premise technology. H how could you expect to build algorithms that somehow make sense of data that um, can't even validate it because the data is on-premise? And then if you had an on-premise like AI-like thing that didn't really work, well, you can upgrade it once a year to try to get, get an upgrade in the algorithms. That's not viable either. So that's why we feel like being a fully multi-tenant, 100% SaaS-delivered company is the only company that can deliver on this vision. And this vision is absolutely necessary if you have any scale or if you want to bring the whole team around to the digital business. So we're very excited about that. So check out Project Seymour. Sign up for the beta. Look for it on newrelic.com. Just look for Seymour. And uh, we're going to have a very few lucky customers trying it out in the next month or so, and we expect it to roll it out to all of you in 2017. So that's Project Seymour. Thank you.